Hello, hello, beautiful souls. I hope all is well. So let's get into finishing up these videos I was supposed to do yesterday. Now, um, I want to talk to you guys. I'm going to bring you a few scriptures. Um, I haven't done this in a while, but I want to back up what I'm saying with scripture so you guys know that I'm really talking about what I be talking about. Okay. So, guys, understand that there is a war for your soul. You literally have people, entities, more so entities that are after your soul. Demonic, devilish, witch, warlock. It's real. It's not just like, you know, oh, there's something cute for Halloween or something. I don't know. But some people don't believe in the spiritual realm. They don't believe that there's wicked, evil people out here. People that do spell work. People that... um <clears throat> Go and consult witch doctors and voodoo and, you know, whatever they choose to do to try to attack people. It's real. So a lot of times some people may be even wondering, like, why am I getting up today and I don't feel motivated? I feel like I don't want to do nothing. Why am I waking up today and I'm feeling attacked? I feel like, you know, I haven't slept in weeks. Da -da -da -da. Because you probably have their spiritual warfare going on. God reminds us in the Bible, it said, he says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against evil principalities in high places that we cannot see. That is in the book of Ephesians. Every time I think about certain things, even with people that I don't like, that I get into it with, that I don't talk to anymore, I don't just, I don't just look at them. It's the spirit that's behind them. It's always going to be the spirit that's behind them. And some people can be possessed in literally just little moments. In the Bible, God, God tells us like all of these things. They tell that He tells us how people had unclean spirits in them and how they got possessed. Jesus, when he was with the disciples, and Peter was like, Well, surely, 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 God, you don't have to die. You don't have to. Jesus said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Not saying that Peter was literally the devil, but in that moment, Peter allowed the devil to use him. A lot of people out here allow the devil to use them to get to you because the devil sees that you are his main target. So he knows sometimes you might not really get into it with a stranger or you might not pay him so much attention to a stranger. Some people do, but me personally, I don't. If I don't know you, you don't exist to me. But Somebody that you love, somebody that you care about, somebody that's really close to you that can make an impact, that's when the devil's like, Birdman, he's like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh yeah, I got I got I got a new, I got a, I got a new victim. And it's gonna be easy. Cause we always expect more from those who we know and we love. But the enemy will use them to get to you. The enemy has used a lot of people. Like this this man, this entity, I don't even want to say man, this entity, the, the devil, he knows how I've had a calling all my life since birth, you know, and he's been after my life, whether it's trying to physically take me out or causing other people, family members, friends, lovers to like turn out to be like really horrible people. To like make the pain so bad to the point where you don't want to live to see another day. That type of pain. He's a, he's influenced them. He's possessed them to hurt me. So a lot of times it's not the person. It's the spirit behind them. But they're an open and willing vessel. And that's where you have to be careful who you hang around. Who you associate with. Who you love. Even if it is family or lover. Sometimes you have to cut it off. Maybe not permanently. But until you know that entity, you feel that energy is gone. And if it ain't gone, then don't go back around. I don't recommend it, no matter how much that person says they love you. Yeah, ain't my daughter. <laughs> She's like, amen, mommy, amen. But I want to give you guys some scriptures so you can realize how much power you have in Christ, as well as the things we should be more focused on. Like I told you guys in Ephesians. 6 12 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against evil principalities okay that's that's truly important to remember because if you don't remember that 
you're going to take certain actions and you're going to like really internalize it. You don't need to do that. I'm going to read you guys Luke 17, 20. And it says, one day the Pharisees asked Jesus, when will the kingdom of God come? And Jesus replied, the kingdom of God can't be detected by visible signs. You won't be able to say here it is or over there for the kingdom of God is already among you. Okay. The kingdom of God is already is within you. But the Pharisees and the Sadducees couldn't understand that because they didn't have it. The kingdom of God was not within them. When you have a nasty, evil, wicked spirit, that's not of God. You know a, a, a tree by the fruit that it bears. Okay. But if you know you have a loving, caring, gentle heart, and you're wondering why all these things are happening, it's spiritual warfare. And that doesn't mean to give up or throw in the So that, that doesn't mean to give up or throw in the towel. <laughs> throw in the towel, okay? Do not give up or throw in the towel. Because you're always going to be faced with something in this life. Unfortunately, guys, life is never just going to be a piece of cake. But what I will let you guys know from reading the word of God and learning about manifestation, you, you are a co-creator of your own reality. So understand you are a co-creator. Now, just, just, not, just not an overall creator. You're a co-creator. God is in control of us 100%. Even if we say, I don't feel like doing this, I'll never do that. I ain't never going to do it. Trust and believe. If God said you're going to go do that, sweetheart, you won't go do that. Saul in the Bible who was killing Christians, guess what? He thought he was going to be killing Christians to the day he was dead. God said, no, 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 no. You're going to stop killing Christians. Paul's like, no, I'm not. Guess what God did? Made him blind. Okay. Brought Saul to his damn knees and changed his name from Saul to Paul. So don't ever, ever, ever get it twisted with God. Okay. God is in control. And even if you think it's not going to go a certain way or it can't go a certain way, where's your faith? What God do you serve? Because the God that I serve, the God of the Bible, the God that is alive today, the same way he was alive back then, he has all power. He has all control. And guess what? He's given us that same power. People feel so helpless and that's why they choose to end it all. When you have the power of God, there's nothing that you can't do. And again, I'm going to share a few more scriptures because I believe a lot of times when people end it all for themselves, they're thinking about things in the past. They're overthinking certain things. They're thinking about, oh, this could be better. Why am I not here yet? Why am I not doing these things? So I'm going to leave you guys with a few more scriptures, okay? So we're going to turn to Philippians 4, 8. I love the book of Philippians. Philippians 4, come on. Oh, so, Philippians 4, Philippians 4, 8. I want you guys to remember this, okay? Philippians 4, 8. It says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about, think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Philippians 4, 8. That should be your mindset. Always. So that should be your mindset, okay? Philippians 4, 8 should be your mindset. Think your mind, okay? When people end it all, when people give up, when people, whatever it is, it starts in the mind. Everything starts in the mind, okay? Therefore, you have to take captive, take hold of every thought. Every thought that comes across your mind, you need to be very careful. Because things manifest. Words are like spells and they will manifest. I want you guys to always remember this. That is why God is saying, whatever things are pure, whatever things are true, Whatever things are honorable, whatever things are right, pure, lovely, admirable, think of these things because God knows that your words and your thoughts will manifest. If you're thinking like, oh, this is dumb, this is stupid, I'm 
you know, I don't have no money, I don't have this and that, you thinking all that, that's exactly what you gonna manifest. Period. And people say, I'm rich, I am prosperous, I'm abundant. People look at them like, but guess what? Those same people be rich, prosperous, abundant. <laughs> Because they saying it, then they put their mindset to it. And anything you put your mind to, you can do. That's why that saying is true. It's not just some cliche. It's real deal. Hold it for you. Okay. <laughs> What's another one I got for y'all before I go? Um, let's see. Philippians 3.13 says, Dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. That is another trap which causes people to go down in the dump. It's because they're too busy looking in the past. Stop looking in the past. There's nothing good for you back in the past. Whatever you left in the past, leave it. It was garbage. It was, it was not for you. That's why it's there. So stop checking in the rear view mirror. Stop going to check. Stop checking. You're not, no, move forward. Looking back in the past and contemplating about the past and things you wish you can change and things you wish you didn't do and da, 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 that causes depression. That causes anxiety. But again, certain people capitalize off of these things instead of telling you the truth. You don't need to do all of that. You need to take hold of your mind. And it's hard, but you have to do, you have to start, okay? You got to start somewhere. And within 30 days, if you take captive and take hold of your thoughts, I promise you, you will be a better person. You will be a better individual. That is just facts. So no looking in the past, focus on the future, and you're going to focus on what's lovely, what's true, what's admirable, what's pure, what's lovely. All right, y'all. So I'm about to wrap it up because y'all know how I do. I'll wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. I'll wrap y'all up like a daggone bow, like a gift, okay? <laughs> but um, if, you know, people wonder, like, Amber, you're always so happy. You're always so bubbly. I've been like this for years, even when I was going through Helen Back because my mindset, my mindset, no matter what has happened to me, has always said, you are going to make it. Everything is going to be okay. That is my personal affirmation. I think everybody should come up with affirmation. Everything's going to be okay. At the end of the day, everything's going to be okay. Everything always works out for me. Everything always works out in my favor. It is true, and I say it, and it does. I am blessed. I am highly favored. What do I need to walk around sad and in the dumps for? Yes, life is hard, but I mean, come on now. Everything, everything, pretty much at this point, everything's, everything's hard. Like you can't, you, 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 you cannot allow, again, the thoughts to just run marathons in your head or it's going to be over for you. God gives us so many instructions on laying, giving it to him. Give your problems to God, guys. Okay. Go to God, pray to him, talk to him and leave it at his feet. Stop trying to take things on for yourself because you're going to fail. You're going to fail. God is within her, so she will not fail. God says, do not worry about anything, but pray about everything. That's also in Philippians. Go on Philippians today and Ephesians today if y'all get a chance. You got 24 hours in a day, so you could do it. Go on these scriptures and chill out there and just look at, look at the goodness that God pours out to you there. That should be able to feel your heart with joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That is in the book of Nehemiah. That is also in the book of Ephesians. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So we don't need to be down the dumps about anything. Because regardless of what, bit, what is brought our way or regardless of what's in our past, God still made you despite of that. God been knew what was going to happen to you, baby. He been knew it before he knitted you in your mother's womb like it says in the book of Psalms. There's so many promises and God still said, you're, you're, you belong here. Even though I know what you did, even though, like I said, I know what you did last summer type of vibe, right? Nobody else knows, but God knows and God still loves you anyway. Don't let your mind, don't let the evilness of this world bring you down to think that God will not love you, that you cannot keep going, going with this. Yes, you can. And yes, you will. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. All right. I love you, beautiful souls. Keep your head up, okay? I know the holiday season gets sad, but keep your head up. I love you.
And remember, God loves you more.